Amanda with Sweet Pieces, and I'm back today with another video for you. I want to talk to you today about Effects Decorative Furniture Appliques. This is a fabulous product, and it's um, sold in our shop. We have a ton of different decorative appliques available on our website, as well as in the store. We have this handy dandy little screen here that shows all of the different appliques that we carry. And basically, this you may be thinking, oh yeah, so what, wood appliques? Well, they're not wood. They're actually latex, and they're flexible and bendable. How cool is that? So you can basically apply these to you know just about anything. You can put them on mirrors, you can put them on tables, on dressers, to really dress something up. Um, so if you have, say, a plain dresser that really doesn't have any detail to it, and you wanna turn it into a Frenchy looking piece, you could just grab a couple effects, glue them on, and go ahead and paint right over them. So they're really, really fun. Um, so if you take a look here, we actually have this little mirror that we did a while back. And this is what I call our country bumpkin mirror. It was totally country. And we put these beautiful appliques on it to make it look really Frenchy. This is a beaded trim, which comes in about, it's about 42 inches long, and you can cut it to the size that you want. Um, this is a little shell piece up here, you can see. <laughs> it's bendy. Um, we also have these little pieces here, and then also this swag down at the bottom. So again, I'm gonna flip this around and kind of show you what it looked like before. So it was just like a plain maple, and this is what that, you know, just had this like weird country cut out, and we added the shell onto it along with the other appliques and really gave it a nice update, it's so fun. So these appliques, you can basically cut them to any size just with a pair of scissors. They're just so easy to use. You can wrap them around the apron of a table, super, super easy. And then they're paintable and stainable. You can even sand them if you layer different colors on top of them. So we're gonna show you a little demo today, so come on over with me. Uh, we're gonna be working on a little mirror and again, it was just like really simple and has no detail to it. So we want to add a little pizzazz because, hey, that's what we do here at Sweet Pieces. Um, so here is our mirror. And basically what I've done is I have already put our contact cement on it, which is what we use. And that is the only thing that you want to use to try to glue these on. Don't try any other glues. Trust me, contact cement is the only thing that's going to work. And of course, we do sell contact cement here in the store. So basically with contact cement, what you do is you paint the contact cement onto the back of your effects applique. This is what it looks like before. Um, and then you go ahead and paint it onto the mirror. So I've painted it here. I've painted it in the center area here and also on this side. And so now with the contact cement, you wanna wait about 10 or 15 minutes after you paint it on before you put your effects appliques on there. And I'm gonna just go ahead and apply it. Um, I never measure anything. <laughs> I never, you know, I kind of just play it by ear. I go by eye. These things are supposed to be vintage. They're supposed to look, you know, authentic. They're not supposed to be perfect. You can see here that I'm kind of like repositioning it. And I'm just gonna push this on here. And there we go, we got one effects on. And I'm gonna go ahead and put my other two pieces here on. And how do we do these? Like that, Jill, is that right? <laughs> okay. And like I said, they're bendable, so you can kind of mold them into the shape that you want, which is really great. Again, I'm just gonna eyeball this, make sure it's you know kind of the same. You can reposition it if you wish. And there we go. So we got our little pieces on there. Super easy. How fun was that? We're already dressing up our mirror. And I'm gonna come back in just a minute and show you how to paint this bad boy. Um, I have started to paint this mirror because I just wanted to show you painting the actual effects molding. Um, so I have applied my effects molding at the top. Um, I don't know if you can see this on camera, but um, I kind of just haphazardly painted the contact cement on. And so you can see like around this edge here, it's still a little bit shiny. If you're painting over it with chalk paint, it's totally fine. You, you don't have to be so precise about where you're putting your contact cement. 
Um, so now I'm just gonna go ahead and continue to paint the mirror with uh, duck egg blue, one of my favorite chalk paint colors. And I just wanna show you here, sometimes when you're painting, you do wanna get into those grooves and crevices and it might be a little bit hard. I have a little trick here for you. You just take a little handy dandy spray bottle of water and you're just gonna spritz it in and just use your bristles to get in there. Do you see how easy that covers? Um, water is your friend with chalk paint. It just smooths the paint out really nicely. Um, if you ever feel like your paint is getting thick or lumpy, just take a little bit of water and spritz it in there. And you can see how nicely these effects moldings are um, getting painted over, super easy. And I bet some of you are noticing that I'm painting all over the glass and I'm not being careful at all. And that's okay. Chalk paint comes off of glass super easy. So to me, it's just more work to tape off the glass than it is to just go ahead and paint it. And then I can just use a little razor blade, a little bit of water and get it off super easy after I'm done. So you can see I'm just kind of getting the paint on the brush. I'm just stippling it into the grooves and crevices of my effects. I'm gonna just smooth this out a little bit. And you know, it's, it's not a bad thing when you have texture with chalk paint because it just creates a really beautiful finish. Um, I don't know about you, but I'm definitely not going for a factory finish, a sprayed on looking type of a finish with any of my pieces. So I don't mind if I have a little bit of texture and brush strokes here and there. It just adds to the beauty of the piece, especially with your vintage pieces. And you know, just so you know, you can also create some very smooth modern finishes as well with chalk paint, but for something like this, that I'm adding a little bit of Frenchy look to it and it's old and vintage. I don't want it to be, you know, all smooth and perfect. And with this, I may want to throw just a second quick coat of paint on here in some areas where it didn't cover quite as well um, once it dries. For those of you who have used chalk paint, you know it dries really quickly, um, probably about 20, 30 minutes, depending on the humidity levels. You can go over this with a second coat really quickly. Again, I'm just getting it into my grooves and crevices. And if you've seen our other videos, you'll see I have a, a video called, um, I think it's something like a quick tip with chalk paint. If you have those grooves and crevices and you don't cover them, it creates a really beautiful, dark, deep type of a finish. I didn't want to exactly do that with this. I want this to be totally covered and I may even add another color or even a little bit of gilding wax on after I'm finished to again add just a little bit more pizzazz to it. So I'm going to let this dry and we'll come back in just a few minutes and show you the finishing touches. And for our final finish on this mirror here, so you can see we painted the whole thing in duck egg and I don't know about you, but this looks like to me that these wonderful effects moldings were always here. Um, it just adds a little bit of pizzazz to the piece. We also went ahead and scraped off the chalk paint from the mirror. Um, I kind of wish I would have showed you it. It was so super easy, but trust me on this one, really, really easy. I spritzed it with a little water. I took a razor blade and it came right off. So now um, I, I always feel like, um, you know, chalk paint is a decorative paint. It's not meant to just always be just one solid color. You can lay your colors together and that really takes your projects to a whole nother level. So what I'm gonna do here really quick is I'm just gonna add a little wash on top of this beautiful duck egg blue color. And I'm gonna use a color called Coco. So this is a gorgeous um, mocha medium tone brown color, really, really pretty. And the way I like to do a wash, I've showed you this before, so definitely check out all our videos on YouTube. I'm gonna just spritz the top section. I'm just gonna show you the top section here. And I'm going to dip my paintbrush into just a little bit of paint. I like to use a cheapy chip brush when I do this type of a technique. And I'm just gonna wash this brown color right over that blue. And I'm just gonna show you this center section here. And I'm just swishing my paint into the wet that I just sprayed on here. And now I'm gonna take a rag 
and I have my handy dandy waxing rag. These are my favorite rags and I'm just gonna kind of wipe this back a little bit and get it into the groove there. So this just gives it another layer of dimension. I have that cocoa collecting in the grooves and crevices. And I'm, I'm wiping very lightly. I'm not wiping really hard. I could rub a little bit harder to do a little bit of distressing. If I wanted to, I can distress with a rag as well. And just kind of wiping it back. If I feel like there's too much paint sticking, I'm just gonna spritz a little bit more water. And again, just wipe it back. Really super easy. So again, this just gives it, you know, just another little bit of dimension. You don't see a whole ton of color, but it just gives it another layer. It doesn't look like a factory sprayed on finish. It's gonna look really beautiful and authentic. So normally I would wait for this to dry and then I would um, put a little bit of wax on it and call it a day. But because I'm a little daring, I wanna show you just one last thing. So I'm gonna give this a quick fan here and we will um, add one of our favorite, favorite, favorite finishing touches called gilding wax. Have I ever talked to you about gilding wax before? It is such a cool product. It's so super easy to, to use and we love it here at Sweet Pieces because we are all about the glam. We're all about the glitz. So this is gilding wax, it comes in this little tub and this tub will last you a lifetime. And if it doesn't, we say it here at Sweet Pieces that we will have to admit you to Gilders Anonymous because you could like literally gild your whole house with this stuff. Um, it's meant for decorative accents, so super easy to use. You can use your finger or you can use a brush, whichever you prefer. So you just put a tiny little dab on your finger and you're just going to rub it over your accents. Look at how easy that is and how it just takes it to a whole nother level. You got a little gilding there, beautiful. I'm gonna add a little bit more to my center detail here. And like I said, I would normally wait for this to totally dry, but I'm, I'm just too excited. I have to show you how easy this is. And of course, all of these wonderful products are available on our website, sweetpieces.com. You can shop 24 seven, even in your pajamas, which is great. Um, if you have a question while you are shopping on our website, feel free to give us a call or send us a quick email. Um, you can even add gilding wax, you know, to the edge of this if you want to. Just gives it a little bit of touch of glam and glitz. How beautiful is that? Does that not look like a million bucks? So super simple. That's what we're all about here at Sweet Pieces, glamming it up, making it spectacular for not a lot of effort, not a lot of cash. So the next time you have a piece of furniture to redo, make sure you come to the store, one of our three stores, come and visit us. Massapequa is now open, if you hadn't heard. Get on down there, we're open Wednesdays to Sundays in Massapequa. We're open Wednesdays to Sundays in our Brooklyn store, and we're open seven days a week in Huntington at our flagship. Check out our website for our hours at our contact page, and make sure you check out our events page because we are actually announcing a brand new Pinterest um, well, it's kind of brand new. It's kind of old, but you're going to love it. So make sure you check out all the details on our website. Click on events and workshops, and we cannot wait to meet you.